Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, welcome to episode uh, 155. And uh, for this video, been joined by Simon. No Lee this time. We've uh, left him at home. He's on a bit of a poor form lately, anyway. So didn't want, him, didn't want him dragging us down. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, guys. Um. So for this video, me and Simon have come up to the Bluebell Lakes complex, and we're on Kingfisher Lake. Uh, it's my first ever time on this particular lake. Oh, you fished it a few times yeah, before, I've fished though, it a haven't you? Times, yeah. Even had a decent fish. Yeah, I've had a lot of there. So um, <clears throat> yeah, it's now kind of early evening. We actually got here sort of just before midday, didn't we? And yeah, uh, it took ages to set up. Yeah, it's taken a quite a while to set up. We were here for three days, so we've got a bit of kit with us. And uh, we've already done like leading around and stuff, trying to find spots. And we're sort of in a bit of a corner of the lake, and it's a bit shallower than the main body of the lake. And because of that, we've got a bit of weed in front of us. So um, we've been having to lead around for a while to try and find some spots, which I've done. Have you got your spots? Yeah, I'm not fishing far out on the uh, 10 rods, <laughs> no, 40 yards. No, nor, nor am I on one <clears> rod, but I'll go into areas and all that later on in the blog. But anyway, on the risk of uh, making this blog too long already, to some it carpy happens, let's, let's go, go fishing. fishing. Alright guys, that's all three rods out on the spots now that I've uh, found. A uh, little bit of bait out with uh... just all, I'm just taking the dogs for a walk Chris. Oh, good boy. Good, you bastard, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's a rabbit. Get here, get here. <laughs> uh, cut on them dogs. <laughs> so yeah. Place them, get here, you little bastard. <laughs> As you've seen, I've got one mega close in under the tree to my right, one quite close in at just four wraps out, and 
the other rod is at nine wraps out. Between the four rod, wrap rod and the nine wrap rod, it's really weedy. It took me absolutely ages to find a couple of spots. I started wrapping up at like eight wraps and I come in at like seven and a half, seven, six and a half, six. By the time I found a clear spot, it was uh, down to four wraps. And then uh, when I'd done the other rod, I went a bit longer, nine wraps, and then bang on, found a clear spot first time. So, uh, so yeah, one rod took absolutely ages. Uh, one rod, really quick. And then the rod that's under the branches of that tree to my right, I was actually put onto that spot by a, a local who fishes um, uh, this complex and this lake quite a lot, a guy called Darren. So uh, if that rod produces anything, I'll uh, credit you now, Darren. So uh, as you see, I didn't put a lot of bait out, uh, sort of three armfuls over each rod and then three catapults over the rod that's at nine wraps, so uh, not going in with a lot of bait to start off with, just a little bit for the first night, just to um, gauge how things are going, and then uh, we'll see how we go from there. Right, unless anything uh, happens in the night. This will be the last you see of us today, so hopefully see you in the night. Right, fingers crossed. Right, good morning guys. Other moment, we are still fishless and uh, we heard of a few fish that come out late yesterday on zigs around the lake so uh, just been having a bit of a cast around with me deeper to uh, define the depths of me swim just put some zigs out myself in a bit beyond me distance just so I can bring it back into my swim at the moment. I don't know if you can make it, I've got my phone just here and wound it back into about my spot now and we have got 14 foot of water in front of me. That's about eight wraps out. I can't cast very far in this swim anyway. It's a very limited range to swim this from. But zig wise, I don't think I'm going to change to the zigs just yet because all the fish that are showing on the deeper are still on the bottom or about a foot off the bottom, sort of just sitting above the low line weed. So, um, it's still early morning yet, so maybe the fish haven't woke up and got up into, uh, you know, they haven't come up for the morning sun yet to start warming themselves up, but yeah, they're still. They're still hard on the bottom of the fish at the moment. And where I've wound back to now, roughly I'd say six wraps out. We've got 11 foot of water. And again, the fish are still showing that they're hard on the bottom. So it's not quite time to change to zigs just yet maybe later in the day well there's probably going to be no later about it because we thought we saw it yesterday come midday once the sun's high in the sky the, the fish was on the top all over the place so but yeah we definitely will be changing to um, zigs at some point today because it's going to be even hotter today than what it was yesterday. 
so I'm pretty confident there's going to be more fish up in the water and on the surface than what there was yesterday. But at the moment, according to the deeper, I said the fish are still on the bottom, so I'll stick with the bottom bait rigs for now. Maybe uh, refresh me uh, hook baits just so I got some fresh baits on this morning. And then uh, play it by ear when we, when we can visually see that the fish are on the surface then we'll uh, start getting the zigs out I think. done all three rods now on the bottom baits. They're all back on the same spots I put them at yesterday. But uh, just as I was finishing doing the third rod, you know, setting it up on the bite alarm, I saw three fish coming on the surface, backs out the water, from the left to my right. Went down to this corner of the lake that's to my right. They didn't stay there long, about two minutes later, they come back again. So, uh, so now I've seen fish on the surface. I'm just going to flick out a few uh, dog mixers. Uh, just I'm not float a fishing or zigs or anything yet, but. Um, just to see if any fish do start taking them. And then, uh, if they do, then I'll uh, quickly switch to the zigs and maybe even get me floater rod out. But I'm just putting a little bed of mixes up just to begin with, just to see if I can sort of uh, stimulate any fish to come in and actually feed in on the surface. There's literally no wind blowing, so the mixes aren't going anywhere. They're staying literally right out in front of me. So if I see any signs of a feeding fish, then I'll be uh, swapping tactics again. What have you got in that bucket, mate? I've got some Raza pellets, my good friend. Oh, uh, the old Nash ones. Yes, so I've, I've soaked them in uh, some tiger nut flavour. So I'm just gonna, I've got um, an eight foot zig out there, I think it's in about 12 feet of water, so I'm just gonna spawn a few of these over the top. Zoom in, did he open? Yeah, oh yeah, I can see the riser pellet on the surface now. Yeah, the old spawns tend to get a bit temperamental with age, don't they? Like us all. <laughs> I 
never actually used that riser pellet myself. No, it's the first time I've used it, but looking at the uh, little slick it leaves on the water as well, I think some of the pellets actually do sink, don't they? Yeah, I think yeah, some stay on the surface and then some sort of I think they sink and then sort of come back up again, don't they? Constantly moving through the water. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Didn't open. Yeah, you oh, want to get one of them dot spots. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Do you want to have a go with me Nash air bomb? Uh, me uh, TF gear air bomb. Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, four casts, two misfires, about right for a spawn. <laughs> yeah, 50%. Oh, see if I uh, switch back to a bottom bait spawn mix site rather than your risers. What's your, what are you thinking? Well, I still got two on the bottom, so. Hey, hey. Oh, right. <laughs> And to be fair, we haven't seen anything really on or near the surface like we did yesterday anyway, have we? No, it's been pretty quiet, hasn't it? And when we got here yesterday, there were loads on or near the surface and we just haven't seen that today, have we? So, no. just goes to show that fish don't read the rule books. Because today's hotter and more sunnier than what it was yesterday, so in theory you'd think... You'd think the fish would be more up on the surface, if anything, but but it's been... That isn't my marker float, <laughs> by the way. That's not mine. But. Before somebody says, why are you spawning nowhere near your marker float? Because it's not mine. No, I don't know if you can see it anyway on camera. It's the guy opposite's marker float. But saying that low, it does look like you're casting in the direction of that marker float. Yeah, I'm about 30 or 40 yards off that one. Uh. Just a simple spod mix. Corn and a few boilies. A couple of midi spawns. Oh, you missed your marker float again, Si. <laughs> Just Right then guys, still a bit frustrating at the moment because these fish have definitely not read the rule book about what they're meant to do during what conditions. Because it was about this time yesterday when me and Simon were setting up. And during this time yesterday, there were fish on the surface, backs out of the water, boshing out, just cruising them through, you know, just you know, cruising on the surface, that kind of thing. Today is warmer, 
sunnier, clear blue skies, there's not a single cloud in the sky. So in theory, the fish should be more so on the surface and cruising about. They're not. Apart from those three fish this morning, when I was doing my morning recast, that went in to that corner and then back out again, there has just been absolutely nothing showing on the surface. Or even near the surface, it just don't make sense what's, what's going on. So at the moment, I'm still fishing all three rods on the bottom, on the same spots. Since I last spoke to you, I've still been flicking out the odd couple of pouches of mixers just to see if any fish will come into the, this area or come up off the bottom and start taking them. But they haven't. So, um... I don't really know what's going on, to be honest with you. Could it, I mean, the, the lake is a full health of it, every swim. I mean, old bar one, where I was climbing the tree earlier on, there's a swim round there, which is free. But, um... Yeah, it's pretty much a full house, so unless it's down purely down to angling pressure that none of the fish are showing, but but still, with these kind of conditions, they should be practically sunbathing, cruising around. But they're not, it's just it's strange. I, I don't know why. Anyway. Any change in conditions or fish sightings, you'd be the first to know. Alright then guys, just lit the barbecue. Middle middle rod has just absolutely plodded off. <laughs> and, uh, got a new PB in the sling guys. I've beat my previous PB by an ounce. And what a beast she is. Oh, oh, she's lively. Oh, I'm not surprised. She's, she's put up a hell of a fight. Oh, calm down, girl. Oh, here we go. What is it, Chris? <laughs> it's a PB bream. <laughs> Ten pound five. <laughs> what, a, what a slimy bastard. And the bream doesn't look clever either. <laughs> At the end of the day, a PB is a PB, no matter what the species. Yes, congrats, mate. So, uh, yeah, it absolutely... Plodded off. Plodded off. <laughs> oh, put up one hell of a... Not a fight, really, side. was it? It was about three feet from the bank, Chris, <laughs> so... Yeah, this is on my middle rod at four wraps out. But, yeah... It took you all over the lake, didn't it? <laughs> Not exactly. It took me all over the front of my rods. <laughs> But at the end of the day, a PB is a PB, guys. So, uh, yeah, on a Ronnie rig, on a 12 mil Mystic Plum pop-up. But considering we haven't seen any fish all day long, it's a bit of a welcome bonus, to be fair, to come away from a session with a PB at least. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's return the, the big girl to the deep. <laughs> Good evening, guys. As you can see, we're enjoying our, our, our second barbecue of the session. We had one last night as well. But, um, just to update you, like all through the day I've been saying there's been no fish in front of us, there's been nothing showing. Yeah, now. And we know the reason why now, because um, you've been spawning at your Nash riser pellet, haven't you, all day? I've been flicking out the uh, dog biscuits and I know there's, it looks like there's no wind there is an ever so slight breeze that's blowing from our right to our left and Simon went for a walk around the uh, lake earlier on just to go and see what was happening sort of around, around the lake and um, it turns out that all the riser pellet and dog biscuits that we've been putting out that ever so slight breeze up there has been has been pushing them up that end of the lake and uh well 
he said it was chocker with fish up that end of the lake, didn't you? So, um, so we're moving tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, there's still fish up here, though. I can see yeah. them now. But, yeah. but saying that, though, as, as the sun is about to set behind us, we are seeing a bit more fish activity now in front of us. More in front of Simon at the moment, but we are seeing more fish down this end of the lake now. It looks like as the evening comes on, they are slowly drifting back down this way again. That might just be quick. We haven't put any um, mixes or riser pellet out for a while, have we? So no. they might have scoffed everything down there now. <laughs> now they're coming back up this way to get their feed. Still got one zig out and two on the bottom. So, uh, Touch wood, something all happens tonight. So yeah, so it looks like we were just at, sort of at the mercy of the weather, really. All our bait has drifted down that way. Saying that, we couldn't move, really, if we wanted to today, because it's, no. the lake is still very busy, but there's a lot of people coming off tomorrow morning. So yep. the gentleman to my left is moving, so I think we're going to move further up the lake, aren't we, tomorrow? Yeah. It gives us a little bit more water to play with. Ooh, got a bit of crackling on my steak. Lovely. Definitely crackling on steak. It gives us a little bit more water to play with, doesn't it? Yeah. So first uh, thing in the morning, I think we're going to plan a move. Yeah, because in this swim I've got, it's like a corner of a lake really, and I only get eight, eight wraps. That's my maximum distance. I yeah, can your fish. maximum's 30 yards, man's 40, so we don't get a lot of water. But And just the next peg on the left of Simon 75. is 75 yards you can fish, so. Uh, Gives you more options, doesn't it? Hmm. Uh, so I'm not going to move tonight because now we've seen fish slowly starting to come back this way. I'm going to plug at it for one more night in this swim, just in case anything does happen. And you've had a bream. Yeah. <laughs> PB bream. PB. PB bream. Yeah, pesky bream. Snotty. Oh, uh, like that. Obviously my, my rods are on the spot, so I'm um, just going to play it out by here tonight just to see what happens. And then if uh, nothing happens during the night, it looks like we'll be on for a move in the morning. Yep, definitely. Yep. We've got to move to where the fish are, haven't we? If we can. But saying that, though, again, you looked at the weather and the, and the wind slightly changes again tomorrow, doesn't it? Yeah, so... ever so slightly. I mean, at the moment it's blowing the south easterly. Um, which is pushing mm. obviously right to left but when we're on the southern bank here on the back of the wind so we're not there it, to be honest there's no wind is there really it's about three or four miles an hour the wind yeah. and the lake is flat calm it, so yeah, you can't it, really it, tell there's a wind it's anyway. no wind but it's still enough wind to I said to to move riser biscuit and dog pellets along the lake yeah obviously. yeah so, So, yeah, so that's the story. If nothing happens in the night, we're on for a move. Anyway, I'm going to finish eating my steak. And I'm going to finish cooking mine. <laughs> right then, guys. Rods are going back out for the evening now. I've just uh, refreshed the hook baits. Right hand rod, you can already see. I've already done the rod that's under the tree. And uh, this is the rod that I had the bream on. The one that's out a massive uh, four wraps, so it's going to uh, take some. Can you manage to get that far it's, out? It's, it's going to take something special to four hit. Four ounce, four ounce lead. Uh, three. Can you <laughs> I, get that far? I'm, I'm going to try it with a three. Right. But uh, yeah. There's no wind, so you should get that. It should be alright. Yeah. I mean, it's a long cast at four wraps, so uh, but it's, it's going to take some <laughs> a little bit extra to uh, get that far. I think it's a. Uh, it's uh, going to take one of um, Keith Desmond's uh, special casting techniques, I think. Let's go for it. Well, with 
the Danny Stomp. Well done, mate. Got there. Cheers, mate. Got there. With a Danny Stomp. Just about got there. Right. Good morning, guys. Well, not a brilliant morning because we are still blanking. Absolutely nothing happened uh, last night. So, um, decided, can I have a move today? <coughs> God, so if I'm, looks like I'm looking like a Japanese sniper because uh, the sun's really bright this morning. So, so yeah, I'm going to have a move this morning. Going to uh, move for oh, quite a long way. Oh, oh. morning. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to have a walk down the bank. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, oh, let's get a bit more light without being blinded by the morning sun. So, uh, yeah, this peg come through yesterday and uh, I was talking with the idea of moving in here last night to be fair, but when the fish started showing more back down our way towards last night while we were having our barbecue I said to myself, do you know what the fish are slowly coming back down this end of the lake well uh I'll stick it out just for the night where I am and if nothing happens in the night then I'll move in the morning so uh, nothing has happened last night and uh last night after we had our barbecue there were quite a few fish showing in this swim so uh <laughs> it's only two swims down, but it's a bit more, uh, got a bit more water, got a bit more range I can um, fish out in this swim as well, so, uh, so yeah, so I've got a massive move of two swims down. <laughs> right, better crack on so I can uh, move all the shit I've brought with me that I don't need. Right, see you in a bit. Hey guys, uh, finally completed the swim move. Haven't got the rods out yet, but uh, we know of a few fish that have come out last night and early this morning to uh, zig rigs. There's a lad in the swim I'm in now, there's a lad, two swims to my, three swims to my left who uh, had a fish on a zig this morning. That, actually uh, got to see and then while he was playing that fish some other lads from around the corner come around to have a look at the fish like you know, like you do and um some some of them lads have all caught fish on zigs so uh so it seems like i'm going to be casting out zigs when i do get the rods back out so uh need to uh know me depth first so i've got the deeper out just to see the depth hopefully it's not I've got some 12 foot zigs already made up, so I can, if I can find about 13, 14 foot of water I'll be happy with that. Right, phone's on, just need to uh, find some depth. And again if the water is shallow I can always cut the zigs down to be fair. already clipped up at nine wraps from me other swim. I'll probably be out further than that to be fair. Saying that at nine wraps, that's exactly 13 foot of water. And everyone who was saying they were catching on zigs was all catching on zigs about one foot, two foot under the surface. So uh, from a pure laziness 
point of view to save cutting down these zigs that I've already got made up. If I can find 13 to 14 foot of water, that would be ideal. And at nine wraps, we've got about 13 foot of water, so... Uh, that's not too bad. Right, let's chuck it out a bit further and see what we can see a little bit further out. To be fair, I don't think I need to go too much further out, to be fair, because um, yesterday when we saw the fish showing in front of this rim, they wasn't actually that far out. In fact, they were probably even closer in, to be fair. In fact, I've hit a clip, which I've previously clipped up to a range before. I'm not sure what the range is, but we've got 13, 13 and a half foot of water a little bit further out. So uh, it's looking fairly uniform at the moment, to be fair. Wind it in a bit, see what we get. Oh, got a little bit deeper, 14 foot. 14 foot. 13, hovering around 14 foot at the moment. Oh, it's just dropped to 13 and a half foot. To be fair, the 12 foot zigs that I've already got made up, guys, are pretty much about bang on the length I want. Winding it a bit more. Uh, 13 foot, 13 and a half foot. Which is pretty ideal, to be fair. <laughs> Back at 13 foot, exactly 13 foot now. There's a few fish showing, but they're on the bottom, but we know from what we've seen already in the two days that we've been here, they will come up in the water, especially later in the day. Still on 13 foot, just showering off slightly, 12, 12 and a half foot. So I think, to be fair guys, I think the 12 foot zigs I've already got made up, no matter where I chuck them in this swim, are going to be absolutely bang on. I can go a little bit further in this, this has got more water this swim. The peg marker says I've got 75 yards of water I can fish up to, so uh, as opposed to the 30 yards of water I could fish in that swim two swims down so um so yeah right well, that's pretty handy really that means I don't have to adjust the length of my zigs I've already got tied up so um and that works out pretty much about ideal to be fair water temperature is saying 16 degrees so yeah I think that's pretty much bang on. I'm not going to be fishing straight away. Simon's gone up for a shower at the moment. When he comes back, I'm going to go off up and have a, a shower myself. So the rods probably won't go out for a couple more hours yet. So, yeah, from a pro purely lazy point of view, I don't have to adjust the length of my zigs. Which is ideal, really. Right then. I just need to get a few more bits up within me bivvy and then um just waiting for Simon to come back from the showers really so then I can nip off myself like so right I'll get back to you when we're actually fishing probably in a couple of hours time
Alright then guys, I'm almost ready to go now. I've uh, got the zigs all ready to go. Just been wrapping up the three rods. Uh, if you were counting, this one was wrapped up at uh, 10 wraps. The other two rods I've already done, I've done the other one at 11 wraps and the other one at 12 wraps, so 10, 11, 12 wraps. And then I've worked out when I was putting the deeper out earlier on that uh, they're basically going to be fishing about six inches under the surface, a foot under the surface, and two foot under the surface. So, I say all three things are 12 foot, but because of the depth that the diff them three different ranges, they are going to be fishing at different heights under the water. Right, I just need to cast them out now. Good. <laughs> That's it then guys, time to uh, chill now and uh, leave the fishing in the lap of the gods. I feel uh, I've done all I can do now. You know, I've, I've moved swims into an area that has had showing fish. I've changed me rigs onto zig rigs. What I've been catching around today, everyone we've heard of who've been catching fish has been on zig rigs so um so yeah so I've changed areas changed rigs got some floaters out over the uh over the zig so um it's just in the lap of the gods now so absolutely scorching today I tell you that guys this is the hottest day so far since we've been here absolutely roasting Oh. Now I've expended all that energy and effort in, especially the moving swims. But even though it's only two swims along, but it's it's still lugging all your gear from one spot to another spot. But yeah, anyway. But yeah, just gonna chill out, relax, I'll sit in the shade because I think I'm going to melt. Right, not even have a snooze. Right, and so, so you got a 
a scoop full of bait there. What are we up to? There's a, a little spot under this tree where this tree the branches touch the water. So I'm <laughs> what? Of putting a marginal you mean that spot I was fishing for the last two days? Yeah, that's the one. That's it. That's it. I take it you're uh, going to put a rod on that yourself tonight now. I've this moved evening, this I can. Yep. Yeah. I'll just. I'm going to walk along the bank with it. There's nobody in this swim, so tonight I might just put a rod on that. Oh, good afternoon, guys. Oh, it's more late afternoon, early evening now. And the weather is still absolutely scorching. Still nothing on the fish front. Since I've uh, put the zigs out just every now and again, I've been uh, like constantly, uh, well, not constantly, more uh, you know, just every now and again, putting out a few spawns of um, the dog mixers just to try and uh, get the fish doing something up around near where my zigs are. Fish have come into the area, but. As I said earlier on, they're, they're, they're not feeding, they're just sunbathing. They've literally swam right past where my zigs are. But I haven't touched the zigs, I haven't moved them. And um, to be fair, I don't think I need to because the areas that they're in, I've seen the fish there, I know they're there. It's just waiting to find a, a fish that is feeding and waiting for it to slip up really. Um, Simon's got two zigs out but what he's done with the rod he still had on his bottom bait is uh, the swim that I was in you know when I was uh, fishing a rod under the tree when I was wading out and plopping it in well uh, Simon has now put a rod on that spot he's still fishing his swim but he's like he's waded out plopped the rod under that same spot I was fishing and then waded back along the margin all the way back to his swim. So uh, he's going to try that spot for tonight now. But yeah, as in uh, fishing wise it's absolutely dead. Well, dead for us anyway. I think another fish come out round the other side of the bank. Uh, hour ago, maybe a couple of hours ago. But yeah, it just it's just the waiting game, really. I mean, you can't force the fish to take your baits. It's just waiting for that odd rare fish that might be looking for a bit of food to slip up on on your rig, like so. Right. <sighs> Gonna melt, I think. Right. Well, anyway, I think I'm gonna put out a few more dog mixers because it's been about half hour since I put my last lot out. Can't really see anything in the area at the moment, but. Just trying to keep the area just topped up with mixers, so if any fish are near the area, they might see it, smell it, whatever, and move in. I've got plenty of mixers with me, so I don't have to worry about running out or anything. I can put plenty in. Right, I'll leave it there. In a couple of hours' time, the new uh, season of Thinking Tackle starts on uh, YouTube and on the Caller website. So I'll be watching that tonight. I'm just not made for this heat, to be fair. Oops. 
Simon's just put a, uh, a 12 foot zig out as well now. third night it's practically morning in about an hour's time I think it will be daylight but it's taken some time but we finally have our first carp on the bank 24 pound 14 dark as you like across the back common give me a bit of a awkward fight it tangled up my right hand rod this was on the uh, the left hand rod, um, so left hand rod, so that would have been the one 10 wraps out, 12 foot zig, uh, fox zig liner, uh, yellow one with a bit of black foam, and yeah, we're finally catching, so the, the change of swim, the change of tactics, has finally paid off. Oh, it feels good to have a fish on the bank for finally. First time ever on Kingfisher. I'm the first Kingfisher fish. Well done, mate. Magic. Magic. Cheers, well mate. Well, good morning guys. It's certainly a, a lot better morning this morning than it has been the last couple of mornings. Feels a lot better knowing I'm going to be finishing this uh, session having not blanked now. Got about about five, six hours of fishing left, so never know, there's always time for a, another one yet. I forgot to mention last night, well, I had well, last night, early hours of this morning, uh, while I was showing you that fish, that, um, as commons go, that's, that's my new PB for a common. My previous PB for a common was only 23.11, so uh, yeah, so now I've had a, a 24.14, that's my new PB for a common, so happy with that, and also doubly happy because that's also the first time I've ever caught a fish on a zig in the dark, so, so yeah, so, so two bonuses really. Uh, anyway, another hot one again today, so yeah, I don't think the fish are really feeding out there. I can see a few fish out in front of me now. Again, like yesterday, they just look like they're sunbathing. And I think the odd fish that are coming out, you know, it's just the, it's just you know, it's just the odd fish that are tripping up that might be nibbling. A bit. That's saying that low. Um, finally went round the lake yesterday, uh, last night, and helped out with a lad. 
to photograph a fish on the other side of the lake. And he caught that one on a bottom bait, so um, there are a few fish actually properly munching, so... Yeah, don't, mister. Yes, mate. <laughs> you had anything? You had anything. <laughs> How long have you been here? Three days, mate. When you going? Later. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't linear, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, during the course of the next few hours, guys, just be doing a bit of a slow pack down of the, uh, of the items we don't need anymore. But yeah, just going to sit in the shade of fig now and just chill out and wait for the next fish to possibly slip up. Just a couple of the showing fish guys. Oh, there's some more just the other side of that bush. Yeah, this is what we're, we've just been cruising around with most of the time. Their back's just under the surface most of the time, just just cruising around and sunbathing mostly. But those fish, oh, there's another one slightly got his back out of the water. But uh, yeah, they're, they're just. Ooh. There we go. Typical, just when I panned away from that area, a fish boshed out. <laughs> but this is really just been like this for the last couple of days, just sunbathing, cruising up and down the lake, not really feeding at all. I think the old one that's being caught is just. So just been the old fish slipping up. But while this fish out in front of us, there's always a chance of uh, another one slipping up. showing in front of us this morning and they've been a lot closer in today than what they have been the last couple of days so uh so yeah so I've uh, just brought each rod in a couple of wraps just so that they were uh, now fishing in the area that the fish have been coming past us it also means because of the length of the zigs I've got, they're practically going to be fishing just under the surface now, so, um, which is ideal really, because most of the fish that I've been showing have been just cruising on the surface, so when they come past again, them uh, zig aligners should be literally right in their faces now. So, uh, oh, fingers crossed.
Green little bugger. Right and guys, the fish are still coming in close, most, most of them still just sunbathing, but I have had a couple of, take some mixers off the top, so every now and again I've just been still putting out just the odd catapults worth just to uh, you know, entice the fish into feeding near the surface, you know, pretty much exactly where my zigs are, as I've said already, the zigs are now literally just under the surface, so uh, right in amongst the uh, floaters. But, uh, yeah, I've seen a couple of carp come in and actually pick up the floaters, and um, when they're there, you know, you're like, oh, come on, come on, yeah, it almost feel like it's going to happen. But, unfortunately, none of them picked up the, the one with a hook in it. Probably down to our last two hours, two, three hours of fishing now. Uh, Simon tried a bit of a floater fishing earlier on. That didn't work. He was landing the floater set up right in front of the fish, just going straight past it. I don't think it's too hot to be fair. Been on Facebook this morning and seeing there's a few venues around the country that have actually started spawning with this warm weather, so uh, I think they're not spawning here, but I think they're just I've said it already, I think they're, they're just sunning themselves. And just the odd carp here and there is just flipping up. Oh, oh there's a carp out there now. Don't know if you can make that out from way over there, but there are carp out there on the surface. Just waiting for one to slip up. Tail, You're ready, Chris. Yep. Hey, hey. Uh, it's actually a personal best floater caught fish. <laughs> oh, the king of bluebell strikes again. I don't know about that. Mr. Gaz Dennis <laughs> catches jammy. jammy catches his seventieth thirty pound fish, yeah. actually weighing thirty four pound eight. That is 70th 30 plus fish. Well done, mate. Absolutely amazing. Thank you, Chris. Absolutely over the moon.
Thank you, sweetheart. Nice to see you That's again. Not up there, isn't she? You big, beautiful old carp. Hey. Eh? See if you can get her head out of the water, guys. Just, lift, just gently. See if you can just get that head out. Yeah, blood. <laughs> Come on, sweetie. Let's get you out of that mucky old silty water. Hey, oops, I think she's away. Yeah, there she right. goes. Well, that's it then guys. We've come to the end of our 72 hour session here on Kingfisher Lake at the Blue Bow Lakes Complex. Uh, certainly for me it's been a good session anyway, especially towards the end. I've blanked but I've really enjoyed myself. Yeah, been good meeting up with you again yeah, mate. No matter what happens it's always a good social yeah, when you were with, you with mates. Uh, I've also got to thank Gary for uh, letting us uh, film him when he got his... Uh, 30 pounder fish out. Uh, if anyone doesn't know anything about this complex, uh, Gary is pretty much the daddy of this place. I think he's had <laughs> every fish people want and he and multiple times, hasn't he? Yes, yeah, definitely. in fact, when he's the mum, yeah, when Corda come here to do their filming, they actually went to Gary for uh, a bit of advice for advice and hints and tips and spots and all that. So there's nothing. Gary don't know about this place, so uh, so anyway, he's probably got a big head now because he'd be watching this back. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's right. not like that at all. Right, anyway then, guys, thanks for watching this episode. I know it's been a bit of a long one, but it has been a three-day session. Uh, my next session and blog, believe it or not, is going to be back here in three weeks' time. Yeah, back on here again. Yeah. We might be here or we might be on Swan Lake, we're not too sure yet, are no, we? No, not too sure yet. So, um, but Lee will be with us this but time. But Lee will be with us and also be joined by fellow blogger Math T UK. Math and Dave. And one of his mates, Dave. So um, so we're going to have a proper social that time. Right, anyway guys, don't want to waffle on too much, we're off home now. Can't wait to get in my air conditioned car. I need a cold beer. <laughs> yeah. Alright then guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in about three weeks time when we'll be back here. Till then, See tight you. lines. <laughs>